Forward in the lane, I expect it to kind of work like that. Final lock is Renekton on Forte. So it's going to be Renekton into Hecarim top matchup, you would think, with MB taking that rise towards the mid. They, we, they, we've had so many unique picks and so many strange picks here. Kind of talk to me about how these compositions are going to work here for us. How, what are these teams intending to do? Um, anytime I see Lee Sin and Syndra, I'm thinking that at level 6 and at level 9, um, or Syndra's level 9, when you walk into the jungle with... Uh, those two characters, you automatically get priority. Like the, the 2v2 potential there is massive with the amount of burst damage. And I feel like that's where a lot of the pivot point starts for Vega Squadron. And then you have the likes of the Karthus and the Hecarim, which have so much scaling and team fight um, ability on them. Whereas on the other side, it looks like a much more standard composition yep. from INTZ. Everyone's probably used to seeing these champions uh, again and again. And when you have a Renekton, I feel like he gets a lot of the attention, the priority, especially when you have such a safe bot lane like Ezreal Prom. A little bit of an inventive composition coming out from our CIS representatives. Brazil well, going... Standard for them. Oh, standard for them, but it's definitely not standard for the tournament meta so far. We'll have to see if it does end up paying dividends. INTZ, on the other hand, going a little bit more standard, playing the sort of thing that made them the champions of Brazil. The question is, can they weather the storm? Because it is going to be an almighty hurricane coming from the Vegas squadron. Yeah, and again, I expect a lot of attention to be given up to that top laner, Tay, initially on. In the playoffs, he did step up pretty massive on that Renekton as one of the carries of the team. But normally, he is kind of that uh, all-rounder uh, type of top laner. Let's see if it uh, pays dividends for him, giving him a little bit more of carry potential. Let's have a quick look across runes and masteries, because it's always interesting to see with sort of more eclectic compositions, piecemeal compositions, exactly who is taking what. We have uh, Dark Harvest on Gadget, Electrocute on No Man's Conqueror on Anana Sick on that Lee Sin. It's Klepto Ezreal down towards the bottom lane as expected, and the rest of it, uh, it's gonna be Conqueror Rexai, no Hail of Blades for Shinny here. Would you like a fun fact, Medic? I love fun facts, Frost. Are you, quick, are you channeling quick shot for this? Is this a quick stat? No, quick please, fact? let's not do that. Okay. Anana Sick means pineapple. Okay, that makes it, because Ananas, Ananas is pineapple, isn't it? Yes. And that is much easier <laughs> for me to say than to uh, butcher this poor man's name. So okay. if it's cool with you... You're going to say pineapple. The jungler of Vega Squadron is pineapple. Okay. We'll, we'll use Ananasic a couple yes. more times. We'll easy win to it. I know everyone hold hands. That's fine. I can do this. He's I, going at that. Yes. In team fights, I'm probably going to say Ananasic, because if I think, if I say something like pineapple throws out the dragon's rage kick, that's gonna just make me giggle. I think that just sounds cooler. And pineapple with the kick onto the back. No, no, no I'm gonna go with a nanosick, but I will join you on your pineapple hype train for a little while. So um, for this matchup in particular, I was really looking at the two V2s to kind of settle the score. No Man's gets a lot of praise in the CIS. I think he's a very talented uh, mechanical mid laner. And again, on Syndra Lee Sin, there are very obvious power windows where this 2v2 is just a very big deal, has a lot of kill pressure. Um, but I feel like it, it's kind of lopsided a little bit. I kind of wait No Man's over Envy. I'm curious if that's how the matchup will actually go for them um, as individual players. But I wait Shinyi over Pineapple. And so kind of in the 2v2, it feels like it can go either way. It really depends on who, which team gets the you know, first priority, which team makes the first play. And, and this space is checking into whom? Regardless of matchup, I actually have just been very impressed um, with Shinny's pathing. I think sometimes, though, he can go a little bit over aggressive, but he tends to be a very smart jungler about the game and, and read the situation appropriately. This is actually really dangerous for Santos. He was caught out with the concussive blows, and uh, Redbird and Mills hit the level to first down towards that bottom lane. So Santos took a huge amount of damage, chunked out, had to use his first potion of the lane. Early level spam from Braum and Ezreal, always going to be obnoxious by throwing out those Qs. And with Mills picking up the uh, little mana potion as well, makes it even harder to fight against them because you can't can't rely on the Ezreal running out of mana in the lane. It's going to be too sustained up. And Anasik, or Pineapple, as he is better known, is going to steal away this, uh, take away the Scuttle Crab. We did see Shinny take the bottom side one. He's passed up towards his red buff. And for the moment, neither jungler able to make too many forays into these lanes. But Boss is actually winning this trade into Tay in the top lane. 
The Hecarim has a huge amount of damage early on, and with the Corrupting Potion can just trade into the Renekton. Yeah, I feel like it was also the Corrupting Potion. Um, so the thing about both these champions is they kind of deal with the wave in the same way, and that you want to be in the wave and you want to trade on your opponent while you're also pushing by like spamming either your Cold Meek or your uh, Rafflecopter if you're Hecarim. <laughs> but having the access to the Corrupting Potion just kind of gave him the edge, and it looked like uh, Boss just got a better position on the mini wave. And boss is going to back away just in time as Ginny was on his way up towards the top side. Ginny's actually done an entire jungle clear here, taking every single one of his camps, whereas Ananasik is just a little bit behind in terms of camp bio, but actually seems like Boss is going to stay around in that top lane. Ananasik going to come up and try and look for a gank here. Tay might overextend, not expecting Boss to be there. Oh, Boss! Devastating charges onto a minion. And that is not a Boss move to do. He's slippery. Yes. Oh, okay, wait. This could be important because Boss actually had to, they know he stayed around and I, Ginny sneaks into that top book. I don't think they're looking for a dive. I hope they are. I mean, no, I don't think they're looking okay. for the dive. I'm pretty sure that he's just here to make it safe for him to push this wave in. That does make sense. You don't want the least in ganking from behind when the teleport comes in from that. Hecarim Tay will push in the lane. Both the junglers have a cord. And Shinny goes double longsword boots instead of upgrading that jungle light. That moment when you make me question, I was like, oh, are no, they no. going to dive? Medics used the, to think the, they're going to the dive. The thing is, I didn't think they were, but I hoped. There was a, a certain aspiration in my heart as the Q does connect in the bottom lane, but, but stunned up. The gank coming in from Anana Sick, but they can't quite land the damage onto Red Bite. Sonic Wave will hit from the pineapple but Mills tanks it up for his support. Good body blocking right there. Um, and that's how I want this lane to go, at least if you're a Vega Squadron fan. You want uh, Gadget to have it push forward, you know, remove a lot of those creeps in the way of um, Santos there, and Santos should just start throwing out spears, see what he connects with. You can see Gadget has played a lot of these unique champions down towards that bottom lane. Four and O of the Carthus, triple Dorans got a 31 KDA as well. He actually just grabs a Dorans for each victory that he gets on Karthus. So you think it's triple Dorans, but... It's going to be Quadra. Or does he get five just saying, well, I'm going to I'm going to win this game as well. Get the Pentadorans. It feels like you should summon a, a Super Dorans if you get five of them. I like mean, a pentagram. how are you going to move him from that lane? That's true. You're never, he's never going to be moved at all and it also means that he has that extra mana regeneration no man's will need the blue buff eventually in that middle lane this this mid lane we, we wondered how it would go how the matchup would really play seems to be pretty even early on rise with the aftershock is actually really hard for a syndra to kill before you get some jungle attention and before you hit that level six which has just been popped by no man it feels like mid these days is really just kind of a tug of war back and forth with the uh the minion wave again i was looking for the window um that once pineapple there also has access to his dragon rage kick just the sheer burst damage that comes out of Syndra ultimate on top of Lee Sin ultimate is quite devastating. Um, so that's why I want Vega Squadron to start making their moves around. But here comes Shinyi. Sitting on a control ward. No Man's has no awareness. He's going to step forward, puts control ward down of his own. Shinyi goes in, but Pineapple round the corner. Only level four, doesn't have the Dragon's Rage kick. We'll just force Envy and Shin here away, but Nomads could actually fight Shin here. The Unleashed Power is going to be a lot of damage. Shin flashes forward, goes on stop but dies. Nomads flashes away, and Nanasik is the one to pick up the killer. First blood in this game goes to the Vega Squadron. Very disrespectful there to kind of step forward. I think he was expecting that Envy would step up and give him a bit more coverage right there, but uh, Tess his luck against the Syndra, and Nomads just yeah. stat checks him on the ultimate. Do you have more health than this damage? Doesn't even have any magic resist either, so it's definitely not going to work against that Unleashed Power. I have another look at this, but it does just feel like Shinny goes over-aggressive after realizing that Ananasik is there. And the thing was, is he was given the little wiggle, clicking back and forth pretty fast to try to make the Lee Sin uh, Q miss, which he initially dodged. But then he saw that he was in a really rough spot, overreached for the control war, and is like, ah, maybe we can turn this one for one. I'm going to die, but let's see if we can also grab Syndra and trade Flash for Flash. Flash for Flash is okay. Envy still has a Flash of his own, but No Man's has the cleanse, so he's a little bit safe in that middle lane. Yeah, except he didn't get the kill. <laughs> that, the pineapple is just gobbling up all of these kills. It's a prickly customer that you have to deal with. Uh, I think it's just a situation now where as long as No Man's can make sure that um, he never loses control of the minion wave and he's never forced in an unsafe position without the, the Flash and holds on to his cleanse, that he's fine to take that trade. Oh, boss coming down is definitely going to help him out as well, Ginny. Did get into this bush, but there was a ward spotting now. He scattered the weak out of the E, and he can't burrow to safety. Boss will take the kill, and Ginny is 0-2-0. Zero, zero. I said that No Man's was a pretty solid mid laner. Really good catch right there on the scout of the week to deny him going over the wall, and, and Syndra, big deal. Yeah, pretty big deal. 
Vega actually going to use this to steal away the blue as well. You can give that across towards Gadget. He's now in an incredibly strong position on this card that can just spam out the Skittles as much as possible. And Shinny thought he was safe, but he had been spotted on a wall. But repeat attempts at this lane. You can see the idea. This Syndra doesn't have access to Flash. I still have Flash on the rise. Maybe he flashed forward, grabbed the hard CC, and then you can chain it into the, uh, the Rek'Sai knockup and try to swing this lane kind of back in our favor. But an excellent read there from Vega Squadron. And maybe a little bit of the weight of expectation on Shinhee's shoulders as well, because we, you know, we talked about it a lot in Pick and Ban. We said he's the guy, he's the, the best jungler probably in Brazil, the playmaker for this team. Both the last two times he's died, he's been trying to make a play, he's been trying to up the tempo a little bit, and he's just been caught out because of being a little bit over-aggressive. And he's just not picking his targets uh, that well and not really paying attention to a lot of vision. Something that INTZ really do struggle with, they're good at placing aggressive vision, but they're quite poor at clearing out vision. They'll always have a lot of wards behind them, which opens them up to a lot of flanks. So I feel like compositions um, with really strong engage tools, something maybe like Hecarim, can be quite punishing against them. Did you realize Vega have a Hecarim? That's quite a strong engage tool for us. Maybe. Maybe maybe they could go for some of those fights. Red buff stolen away here by Ananasik. And it's the push prio in mid, the fact that you can see No Man's coming up, helping out the team, and the fact that Santos can move away from that bottom lane because the Carthus is able to sustain by himself. Santos is here in the middle lane trying to deliver a present to Envy. The Requiem comes down. Rome in the middle of it all as Red buff pops a Glacial Fisher. Here's Shinny. It's a 4v3 in favor of INTZ now. Ananasik falls. And INTZ actually found the perfect turnaround. But this is where INTZ do get strong. Strong. Hold on though, he's okay. Leaps to safety is that they are strong in their team fights. Now, it wasn't necessarily showcased there, but as this game progresses, I want viewers to really hone in on how INTZ are very patient during team fights, particularly watch uh, Envy and watch Redbird when they pick their moments to go in. We won't keep our eyes on it. Redbird, of course, the only player on this team with international experience, played for versus Pro. MSI 2017, and at the start of this, you think it's all good for Vega Squadron. They catch out Envy, and then they can't quite follow up. But they expended so much on Envy, and I think they were surprised by the lack of damage that they did and the immediate response from INTZ's bot lane, which they had a clear pathway because they had gotten early control vision that's now just been uh, cleared out by uh, Santa's there to walk up that river. And as much as the Carthus, you know, can farm by himself pretty safely, Pushing the lane will take a little bit of time. It does, if the Ezreal pushes it towards you, you have to take your time to push it back. And it gave INTZ a little bit of time just to move up towards that mid lane. Santos continues to land the bone skewers down towards that bottom side. But as of yet, that pike hasn't paid off completely. I mean, I think the idea, though, is that he's not there to get the kills in the lane. If he does, that's just a bonus. But anytime you have a Karthus, it's basically looking for parity at 15 minutes. And then if you're past the 15 minute mark, we've seen how Karthus can just end games because in late game presses are and massive devastation rains down on your team. Totally take the games over. He's yet to get a Dark Harvest stack either. Of course, a little bit tougher to do that in a sort of 2v2 lane where you don't have kill threat than it is as a jungler. And with Ananasik here clearing, clearing out the vision initially, he will go for the Mountain Drake. They have push in bot, they have push in mid. This is the perfect opportunity for him to use that. Shinny here. Coming in with the bow, tries to get in, flashes forward, MB trading, No Man's there, furious bite to the face. And No Man's will fall, INTZ answering with a kill of their own in the mid lane, the Mountain Drake will go to Vega Squadron. Yeah, the gank finally pays off, third time the charm is apparently there for INTZ, but like you're saying, an excellent objective trade because it's still a mountain. Um, with the Baron threat damage, like, you have the secure execution from Lee Sin, you have the damage that uh, a Karthus can put out, as well as the burst from Asyndra, and now a mountain on top of it. The Baron threat from the Vega Squadron is really real. Incredibly powerful if they can get towards it. I wanna as the game seems to be in a little bit of a, a slowed down state here for a second, let's talk about scaling. Let's talk about how these comps play into each other later on. Redbird caught out just a little bit here, but he should be able to jump to safety. We'll wait for this fight to finish. You said, you said in pick and ban, they draw attention towards the bottom lane. That's exactly what's happening. But let's talk about scaling. Like, Carthus scales incredibly well, but Ezreal is no slouch in the late game. This INTZ composition still has some power as the game progresses. For me, it's not so much about Ezreal since the uh, double tier adjustments. I do think that he still has some good options. Um, I particularly like more of an AP Imphis on an Ezreal. Okay, so um, would you be going Hexec Gunblade? 
Ludens. I mean, where would you be going? <laughs> There's so many different options, which I think is one of the, the main strengths of Ezreal still is that he offers so many versatile lane matchups as well as itemization. For me, I think a lot of the late game damage potential is actually on Envy's Rise. Uh, Again, people just kind of forget how tanky Ryze can be, how much damage he can be, and how obnoxious he is. But I still really like Vega Squadron um, for just how many damage threats uh, on total they have on their team. Yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. You've got Warrior Enchant coming out from the Lee Sin as well. And their support's killing people. Yeah, when, when Pike can do, just burst people down from like 400 HP, you're looking towards that dust play. He can do a huge amount of work. Game pretty even, 300 gold between the two teams, but both teams will probably be pretty happy with that state of, affla of, of affairs, of affairs. Gadget almost caught out here, but Mills does still have the Arcane Shift. We'll use it. Santos couldn't quite land the Bone Skewer slow. Mills actually has to flash away because the Skittles were coming in and he didn't have any safety from his support. I almost feel like they played the combo incorrectly there. What I would love to see them do, I'll hold it though. And Santos Concussive Blows is going to come out here. The Glacial Fisher locks him in place. There's no real escape for the Pike. Didn't have the flash up and Mills will get a kill in that bottom lane. Excellent turnaround there. Imagine this. Imagine you're Karthus and you set the wall down and you find the slow and you just free allow Pike to run up and to throw the Bone Skewer yep. from melee range. So it's that much harder to dodge rather than trying to open with that. I think that would be a, a much more successful combination of using those two champions. Shouldn't he getting forced out here by Nomads? That is actually something you see a lot from like lower level Pikes and something I did when I initially played Pike is you're kind of sitting right at the back and saying, how far away can I throw this skewer from? How far away can I hit my hook from? What you need to be doing is getting right into the face of the enemy carry, basically standing on top of them and then be like, well, you really can't dodge me because I'm going to land your skewer no matter where you go. I just think it would be really cool to see them abuse the mobility of Pike and the slow from Parthus. So I think that there's a lot of cool combos that have yet to come out this game that still a possibility for. But hopefully we see them. I do always enjoy a cool combo. No man's going to be given across this blue buff. We're getting up towards that 15 minute mark where we talked about Karthus being incredibly powerful. He's got the Ludens first. Pretty even in terms of gold across the board. You can see four plates to one, but INTZ have been able to make up for it with that extra kill. Boss coming down here. INTZ have reacted pretty well, but there are actually five members of Vega on their way. Santos on towards Envy to start us off. Gadget Force back. The Scatter of the Week will connect, but the Sonic Wave doesn't. Envy able to escape. Vega Squadron not quite finding the avenue of approach into this fight. Just walking that one out. Just a little bit of a, a walkabout. Meanwhile, it was Mills who got a free wave as well as denying a control ward, but seems pretty much like a stalemate at this point as we're looking for bigger item break points. Yeah, with plates down as well, getting a little bit of extra chip damage on the tower doesn't really amount to much. You know, eventually we're going to see four-man, five-man pushes for these turrets, and that's when they'll fall. But for now, 100 health here, 100 health there, doesn't matter too much to either of these teams. It's also about where the Rift Herald is going to be executed. Um, you can see that Pineapple's got it right now. And if he goes bottom, they find some kills. Maybe he decides to unlock this lane. Really nice ward there from INTZ. The wall spotter and Anasik as he goes across, and it means immediately Tay pops the Dominus in the top lane. Boss tried to use the Unstoppable also, but we'll get caught underneath the tower. Tay survives. Rift Held you down towards the bottom side. Vega Squadron trying to react to INTZ. It's play up towards that top side. Yep, and now we're in a tower race here to see who can push this one down. Rift Herald? Yeah, Rift Herald's always going to get it first, you have to feel. Headbutts the tower, and they will take it. INTZ will answer with one in the top lane. They'll be about a 1,000 gold ahead at the end of this trade. But there is a dragon on the cards as well. It's only a cloud, but a little bit of extra speed, a little bit of extra rotation can definitely help you out. Envy's going to use the Realm Warp to get back underneath the tower, and I expect to see a Vega going back towards this cloud drag. I think it should be a, a, a pretty good reset from Vega. I'm curious how they're going to set up their lane assignments and if they're going to move Oh, Arthas. Requiem! This could be enough! Mills just gets taken out! That was great combination from the Pineapple Man and from Gadget. And Anasik and Gadget teaming up perfectly. They land the Sonic Wave into the Dragon's Rage, into the Requiem, and it's goodbye, Mills. You can't even take a, I was like, okay, I'm gonna think ahead. I'm gonna try to predict this. Meanwhile, they're just like flying into yep. the jungle, just executing people. You can see again, one of the reasons why Karthus is so cool as a champion, because he offers so much pressure on any sort of um, assassination potential. And getting those kills on Gadget is so powerful as well. The quicker you can get this Karthus towards two, three items, towards the Rabadon, is a huge power point for the mage. But one of the questions that I had is kind of where do they sit Gadget now that his lane has been opened up? Get another look at it. It's just unfair. They just knew as soon as it happened. I love the kick into Tempest as well, though. It's just like, just to make sure I'm going to land any as you fly away from me. 
Mills uh, felt the pain of the pineapple there. Because uh, since they have the likes of Syndra, you don't normally see Syndra out into a side lane unless she's uh, kiting very quickly back to her team. She can't be that overextended, doesn't have you know, the best escape tools outside of a really nicely timed scatter the week. But it looks like they are going to go ahead and send out No Man's. And I just kind of want to pay attention to what he does on one of these side lanes if he's punished and caught out. We'll keep our eyes on him. Let's do a quick check across the items as well as we are starting to see those first two or three items across the board. Trinity Force first for boss, as expected. Glacial Fisher use here. Santos can just dodge away. That was very greedy for my NTZ. But yeah, Trinity Force on boss. Double Luden sitting on No Man's and Gadget. On the other side, you've got the Mana Mune stacking up for Mills alongside that Iceborne Gauntlet. And a Seraph's first for MV in the middle lane on that right. It feels like, though, that they're just going to be farming the waves back and forth. And again, we're looking at the junglers or we're looking towards these cheating members um, kind of pushing their waves forward. And then immediately everyone looks for an opportunity. Can they find someone out of position? Can they look for the uh, the 1v2 in a side lane? Well, it looks like Shinny's looking down towards his bottom lane. Tay has finished his Spear of Sojourn, has the Dominus as well. They could go for the play, but the rest of Vega Squadron reacting pretty well. It's always hard to track a pike as well as he goes through the jungle like this. Has the Ghost Water Dive. Tay's going to pop the ultimate. Boss just needs to survive until the pike can join them. Unstoppable Onslaught gets back underneath the tower, and INTZ can't go any further. The hook comes out, Burn Skewer doesn't hit because of the tunnel, but the rest of the team is on their way. Vega trying to make a play here down towards this bottom lane as Ananasic joins. There's the TP coming in. Requiem Sonic Wave doesn't double TP. Double TP. INTZ trying to react. The Realm Warp used. Santas can flash the wall. And Nana Sick will have that safeguard up in just a second. Goes to the minion. Jumps away. And they will survive for the moment. True Shot Barrage not going to do too much. Meanwhile, Nomad is still pushing in that top lane. And INTZ expended so much to try to chase that. But an excellent disengage. Yeah, nothing really happens except for up here. No man gets to force it all the way back and get some decent damage onto this tower. But now it looks like INTZ doubling down on boss, knowing that he doesn't have his ultimate. Yeah, that's the thing. Doesn't have the ultimate. So much easier to make the play here. Shinny actually flashing forward. Boss trying to get away, but the Void Rock will chase him down. Ra indeed for Skewin. And the quick kill for the INTZ jungler. And after going 0-2-0, he is now sitting at 2-2-2. Two, two, and two. No Man's will get the top tower eventually, but Tay is in a strong position into the heck room in a side lane now. Yeah, and that's kind of where you're trading your power points. The fact that No Man's gets the extra experience. You can now see level 13 to level 12. Levels do mean a lot for unlocking the potential of Syndra there um, versus trying to put that Hecarim down and give your uh, Renekton a bit more teeth. Now Renekton's bite is incredibly strong right now. Next objectives left on the map. We do have Baron up. We're past that 20 minute mark, so it is an option, but neither INTZ or Vega, Vega so I feel far enough ahead to me to really go for that sort of play. You need to be making a pick first. What I like about both these compositions, though, is that if they decided to kind of take their um, their gamble on approaching a Baron, maybe they just want to check, do you have this warded? Will you come contest this? Maybe you're a little bit slow to the play, of, to the, the ability to turn off the Baron. Yeah. You know, you can be on the Baron attack round and you can immediately fly off it with ultimate. Lee Sin can follow as well. Um, Pike can back roll off of it. Whereas Ezreal, Rise, they immediately turn high mobility. And compositions like this, when you do approach there and give you so much more flexibility about the gambles that you'll take approaching that monster objective. Definitely does. And if Vega have done their research, they'll know that INTZ sometimes do lack that vision control. We talked about it earlier on in the early game. This is the point where they really need to get those wards down. Vision denial. Vision denial. They, INTZ are great at placing down wards. They uh, often overlook sweeping out their own jungle. And you're looking for some deep wards there from Vega Squadron. Then get them in towards that red pit, get them around the barren because that is a very strong objective, but only a Cloud Drake up as well. Probably the biggest objective for you. Jump in here from Anana Six. Going to get the knockback onto Redbird. Not Mills, not the target you really want, but the support will do. Redbird flashes, though, and gets the stand behind me. Two Mills. Good escape there from the Braum. Not really too much burnt, though, on the side of Vega. No summoners actually used for that trade. And I like the read. You're in a 1-3-1 position here from INTZ, so if you actually manage to break the bot lane that's been parked there, you can try to crack one of those towers. Santa straight into the ghost water dive there. Didn't really want to get caught out. Misses the bone skewer. Phantom undertow away as No Man's Force back as well. Gadget was on his way up, but the heal will be used there from Santa's just that. 
passive healing, of course. Now, Anana6 making a play over towards the other side of the map. Tay has Flash, has Dominus, and just popped the ult straight away. Knocked back with the Dead Sin charge against the Cold Meek. The Requiem comes out, but the Cold Meek will not be enough to heal him up. Boss takes his second kill of the game. And this is multiple reads from Vega Squadron trying to figure out, again, how they crack or break the 1 3 1 map setup here from INTZ, and it finally pays off in that bottom lane for the Hecarim, but it doesn't really translate into much. They get the kill, they get access to the Cloud Dragon, but they're looking for something bigger than that. You really, like one kill just isn't enough at this portion of the game. Maybe I, I'm just a glutton for punishment because of all the Group A games where we're going at a kill a minute, but these games, they just don't seem to be as uh, fast paced, as high tempo as some of the ones we've had earlier today. I expected these games to be slower paced just due to the nature of the teams playing in it, and I expected this game to be full of really creative compositions, and so far in the first two series, definitely it, paid off. it has definitely delivered. But again, that becomes, uh, that begs like this meta question of, if this group isn't decided by like standard play League of Legends and these teams go into a best of five, and let's say they just race through group stage by, you know, showcasing all of these creative, unique picks, it's super easy then for the Flash Wolves who are watching this to be like, and I'm a ban this, and I'm a ban this, and we're gonna see if you can actually play standard across from us on an international stage. And the question is as well, it's the first time really, I think a lot of people think thought that the Flash Wolves will be really challenged, right? The LMS as a region seems to have been a little bit weaker than it has in the past, and it was definitely Definitely an opportunity for a team like INTZ, for a team like Vega to push towards that group stage. Can they do it? Can they keep the sort of intensity up? Yeah, and already I'm very impressed with the uh, quality of play. I feel like, you know, some people were down on Group B. You look at all the stack competition of Group A, however will it compete? And already I've been surprised by Detonation Focus Me, loving the composition, and I'm feeling this game. Flash not available for Shinny. Can't get onto Gadget. Unleash power was used. Hey came in from the flank, and this is what we tending to see in the last few minutes. You know, teams getting the push prior in mid, then looking for a five-man fight, but not quite able to find it. Baron is up. Boss is pushing down towards the bottom lane. Has the teleport if he wants to join the fight. And Anasik hits the Sonic Wave, but it's only onto Red Bot. True barrage, barrage, a true shot barrage comes out from Mills, but. The problem is there's so much wave play on either side that neither team can really get purchased. There's also not a lot of engage tools, or excuse me, super hard engage tools from INTZ. You're either looking for a snare from Rise or a flash knockup um, from Shinyi. It's really hard for Tay to get into the middle of the fight. That's not really what he's supposed to be doing on this Rek'Sai. So it's super free for Boss to be over in a side lane while his team is just eyeballing INTZ because they can't pull the trigger. Yeah, how do you hard engage onto a team like Vega? You have to expend a lot of cooldowns, a lot of flashes to get into position. So when you do find the hard engage, if you choose to pull uh, the trigger, it better work. Definitely has to. I do want to bring a, a bit of attention to Trinkets as well. As we look towards the top lane, Shinny in a position for a gank. Knocked back with the Scatter of the Week, and Anasik hits the Sonic Wave, but Shinny there in time. It, looking down the Trinkets, it's interesting to me to see one side you have three Oracle's lenses. That's the side of INTZ, the side that traditionally hasn't been great at clearing out wards. On the other side, only Santos has one, and then he has Duskblade passive as well to try and spot people out. Now, INTZ have been caught out in the top lane. Envy taken out with the death from below. The Requiem's gonna pop onto Shinny as well. Uses the Void Rush to dodge it out, but he just dives into his death. His demise comes at the hands of the death from below. Santos takes him out, and maybe that's a barren call for Vega. Yeah, delayed the damage. You can see the immediate pings right there. We'll see how brave they are to pull the trigger on it. No man's trying to uh, fruity up, get some mana. It's going to be really hard, uh, not only because you don't have the smite contest here, but to try to steal this Baron away from the burst potential of a Syndra and a smite. Feels like INTZ's only option is to fight, and they're not going to pull it. Not going for it at all. Baron will be taken by Vega Squadron. 26 minutes in. Boss actually uses the Unstoppable Onslaught to jump across the wall there. They think they can catch out Tay. He was in the top lane, greeting for the minion wave, pulled back with the Bone Skewer. There's no escape for the Crocodile in that top lane, and no man's will take the kill. Look at that gold swing in favor of Vega Squadron from about even to 3,000 gold ahead now. And frankly, just a very careless mistake from Tay to think that he could show on that minion wave when you hear the Baron going down. Of course, they're just going to turn and kill you, but taking another look at how maybe all of this started, did they get a kill? So this was the Requiem coming out. Two shot Raj used as well. Gadget just surviving. So this is when the kills were happening in the top lane. Gadget just about surviving and being able to use that Requiem. And then here was the pick that really sealed the deal for INTZ. Uh, Vegas Squadron just racing up into the top lane. Uh, have the numbers advantage and the mobility advantage there first and clean up the fight. Super, super speedy. And now we see that five-man stack in the mid lane, or four-man stack here from Vega, gonna pay off dividends. When you have Baron buff, when you've got these empowered cannon minions, it becomes so much harder 
for the enemy team just to use their wave clear. Boss will join the team in just a second, and Anasek's actually gone back to kick up the wave, speeds up the minions with the Baron buff, and this next minion wave will join Vega in just eight moments' time. And I like the fact that uh, Vega Squadron are threatening with a potential dive from Boss. They feel so powerful right now with Baron. They're a composition that can siege quite safely, despite the fact that they don't have a lot of range because there's no traditional APC, because they have the threat of the uh, the Syndra Scatter the Weak. So they're looking for those windows that anytime the balls are down and there's a possibility that No Man's could stun someone up and just delete someone, that INTZ immediately need to respect. No Man's gone for the third item Void Staff here as well, which I actually really like against this composition. You've got Hex Drinker and the Mercury treads in the top lane on Tay. You've got the GA for a bit of magic resist on Shinny, and then you've got, uh, oh. sorry, no, no magic resist from GA anymore, but you have the Banshee's Veil on Envy for some magic resist there as well. So he is actually getting efficiency out of that void star. Vega now pushing in the bottom lane, looking for this next turret. Should be an easy enough take for them. They extend, extend that gold lead up to about 4,000 gold right now. Trade here, and someone onslaught the Requiem. Envy does have the Ceres, has quite a lot of shielding. Very strong rise. We talked about how well he scales up, and you said he's going to be their main damage threat as the game does progress. INTZ showing us that Envy still is here to party. I just feel like when you have a champion and your role isn't just like assassin or mage, but it's like tank, assassin, machine gun, mage, mobility, yeah. that maybe the champion's a. Uh, in a, in a healthy spot. Rise is just very good as a champion, right? He's got escape tools. At least it's not Zonya's Realm Walk Rise days. Like, that was annoying. When you could just, like, get out. You, We're like, that's watching. too much, guys. Yeah, that, that was the straw that broke the camera's back. Now, another dragon going over to Vega. They're triple clouding and mountainous at the moment. You've got the Rabidon's Deathcap complete on gadget. We talked about how strong that Carthus is on two items. Well, 30 minutes into the game, he is looking incredibly powerful. It was also that idea of if you get your Carthus kind of, uh, Papa Smithy talks about this all the time in the LCK. If you get your Carthus to, to even footing at like 15 minutes, most teams believe that the game is just over because he'll end a team fight before it begins. The, the scaling potential, the damage potential to open up team fights is just so massive. And that feels like where Vega are with so much burst damage on multiple champions. Yeah, because you imagine a Requiem into an Unleashed Power will take, well, Mills will be dead. Redbird would probably be close to dead unless she uses the Unbreakable Shield. You don't really have that much mag magic resist on Shinny either, so he's going to struggle. MB knocked back with the Scatter of the Week using the Spell Flux to clear out the minion wave, but three members of INTZ are having to answer here in the top side. The only joy for them is the Baron has expired and their inhibitor line has not been broken by Vega. And it feels like if they want to win these team fights, it's kind of about surviving the initial onslaught of Vega Squadron. If INTZ can survive the Requiem as well as the, uh, the Syndra ultimate, then maybe they look to kind of turn the fight or turn the tides on the fight and look for the engage. But again, you don't have a lot of hard engage options. They have shown us they can fight from behind. They did it against Flamengo in their finals. Came back from a 2-1 deficit to be able to win those 3-2. Question is, can they do it within this game? Do they have the tools that they're at their disposal? Or are they just out comped? Are they out drafted? as we get past the 30 minute mark in this match. I think it was a, an issue of execution. I liked the uh, the draft, but when Shinny tried to double down on camping for his rise, on looking for the hard CC, it was just a better read from uh, Pineapple and better play from No Man's. Good stuff all around from Ananas. Like the Banshee's Bell was popped there, Scatter the Week used onto the wards of the rise. Gadget flashes away, Glacial Fisher doesn't hit from Red, but wasn't predicting that the flash would come out. Tower Fort fell in the top lane for Vega. They continue just to chip away at the defenses of INTZ. Mills didn't go down the AP route on this Ezreal. Went for the Blade of the Ruin King, the more traditional Ezreal build here, and is now going towards a more of Mount Mortius as well. And I think that's the big thing for me. It's the fact that he felt uh, he had to spec into the Hex Shrinker there. Um, unfortunately for Ezreal, he can't make use of the lifeline as most ADCs can with uh, Phantom Dancer. And instead, like Phantom Dancer's power curve feels so nice because you get the lifeline passive from it while not sacrificing any of your damage potential, whereas Hex Shrinker just feels so bad and it was kind of one of the big itemization changes in kind of a, an ecosystem that I felt really took Ezreal down from S tier into A tier. Like, I think, again, the versatility of his lane phase, how safe he can be, um, versatility of itemization still put him up there, which is why we see him continue to be played. But I feel like it was a big factor. It definitely was. Other AD carries just kind of 
have a much more smooth curve in terms of itemization, in terms of power. That and the double tier being removed as well from the Ezreal made it a lot harder for him to get all of that late game damage. But he is still a powerful threat. Envy building up towards his Rabadon's death cap. You have to think with the Baron live once again. INTZ will be trying to play down towards that bottom side. I do wonder if we saw Tay matching straight up into boss, whether that Renekton would be able to deal with the Hecarim. But if we look globally again, yep. so we're talking about the Hex Shrinker, you're talking about, you know, can they deal with the, the tools from Vega Squadron? You have, what, two Hex Shrinkers, as well as a Banshee Veil. Um, the Locket looks like it's trying to come yep. in here for Braum. Oh, fight onto Redbutt here. No matter Not soon enough. him out. Redbutt surviving for the moment. Mills locked underneath the tower. The Requiem's going to come out. That will be a dead Braum, you have to feel. It's a double. He takes out Mills from about half HP there. That's the buy one, get one free. <laughs> A uh, pretty happy deal there for Gadget. And now Vegas Squad can turn straight on towards Baron. You have to, INTZ have to fight this. You have to do something. I was thinking glass half full. I'm like, they're trying to get the defensive items. They're trying to survive it, but they're pulling the trigger. Shinny going in, pops the void, rushes all onto No Man's, goes into the GA. MB flashes forwards, gets one. The temple coming in for Tay as well, but is it too little, too late? INTZ forced back. MB low, death from below will take him out. And now, Vega Squadron Gadget actually going to die to the Baron. Gadget's behind it. The shield isn't enough. He's still alive. Tay turns up the boss. Gadget dies. Gadget is down, but the Baron goes down in favor of Vega as well. Now, Tay in a 1v3 flashes away. Shinny trying to run for the wins as well. Tay with the slice and dice, but the chase comes in. It's not enough. He's down. Tay heals up from the cold. Shinny, he just help him. Be one is Shinny, go do it. Stop claiming the minion. CS doesn't matter. You can help your man. True Shop Barrage misses to the side. Shinny with the bow forward. Vega Squadron on the retreat. They need to save these Baron buffs. And Anna is going to jump across the wall, but the slice and dice is on the chase. Boss ran up towards the top side. They're going for him. They'll give away one. They'll say the leasing can get away, but this Baron recall is going to be in time. And INTZ can't take them all down in time. Vega Squadron get out with Baron buff on boss and on an innocent. So recap, Vega Squadron, they get the Baron, they have it on two members, which means they can at least apply it on multiple waves. I think it's actually really big um, that they're able to do that. They can split it up and they can start eating up this map. But I just want to say this. This was such a huge moment for Tay. This guy has had multiple role swaps in uh, Brazil. He's constantly put down. He faces a lot of community scrutiny. He was thought to be a, a big problem in a lot of his teams. And he came to play today. He was in the blood, in the court right there. He was trying to hold it down, and Shinny left him. Shinny just wanted to survive, maybe trying to get out. Didn't realize Tay could turn it around. And as you say, Tay has played four roles competitively. The only place he hasn't been is in that supporting role. We even saw him on pain gaming going uh, 80 carry as well. So he's been all over the map. But at the moment, it seems like top lane is his island. I mean, that was the only silver lining there is they're not dealing with five Baron Boss, but this is still a very heavily favored uh, Vega Squadron game. Definitely, and with Boss surviving with his in the side lane as well, it makes that 1-4 that we have seen Vega pull out very, very effective. Now, two shot for us, Yu's gonna catch out Gadget just a little bit. Shinny's on the flank, Boss pushing up towards the top lane. Vega Squadron splitting up the map a little bit. They have a 5,000 gold lead. They also have a five dragon power play if they can get the Elder, which spawns in a while. Big thing though, is that the GA was also popped for Shinny. So again, one of those defensive pieces is now the uh, GA on Tay as well. So again, multiple Hex Shrinkers, multiple GAs. The plan is survive. Survive the initial burst, then we try to turn it down. But Vega, they don't necessarily even need to fight. They can try to split up this Baron. They can try to siege the towers. Maybe they look to end it right here and now, depending on who they hit with the Scatter of the Week. Last time we saw Vega get the Baron, they weren't able to break this inhibitor line. It was one of the only reasons INTZ actually survived in the game. Now they're just saying, okay, we can group up five, we can push this five and look for these inhibitors. The Cannon Minion's still alive, but Mills has some long range poke. One of the benefits of Ezreal is you can get these Cannon Minions down from quite a long way away. And again, it's all about that timing, the fact that you don't have a traditional ADC. With that opening, though, I think it tells me that they want to either force the fight, at least force the tower. Looking to win the fight before it starts. The Requiem comes in, the prayer to the guards, Vega Squadron. Two Shop Barrage comes out, so much damage, catch is done! But he will go into the death to buy the knockback. So much work being done here by that calf that's in his passive. No man takes the kill. It's one for one, but look at how low all of INTZ are. Red Button, Envy, and Tay trying to defend. shinny has gone back to base. Vega Squadron still have the teleport on boss. They have 17, 15 seconds left on this Baron power play and just one inhibitor tower that they're looking to take. That was the big thing. It was the fact that the tower was still standing, but finally the oh, inhibitor, maybe the jungler. Yes, hook. The death from below comes out as well. It wasn't even needed. No Man takes his third kill of the game. And Shinny, it's been a story of two junglers this game. He goes from 
absolutely awful at the start to great in the middle and now getting caught out paying off for the enemy team death below as well from santas taking out the enemy support and Vega now can look for the end. They can look for the push here as they go towards the bottom lane inhibitor tower. Tay slicing and dicing away the hook back once again. Santas! Can this man do everything? He's hit hook after hook, he gets kill after kill, and Vega Squadron are looking for the win. It felt like a, tor a story of two regions. Who was going to find the redemption? Who was going to say, you remember Alvis Noxluna, you remember Kaboom, but remember my name, and it is CIS, Vega Squadron, that come out on top. Vega Squadron coming, that they're showing us that they are here to party. They'll take their first game of MSI 20 the 2019 with a convincing win over INTZ. I know, you were looking for the Albus Knox Luna year, <laughs> but it's a different CIS team this time around, and a, what a splash. Going through the fan favorites, now showing to their region, hey, we deserve to be here. It wasn't a fluke, it wasn't just about the cheese picks. We can make these creative compositions work on an international stage. And that's why I was thinking of Albus Knox Luna as well, because I remember the brands, I remember these creative picks that they went for, and it looks like the spirit of the Commonwealth of Independence States lives on through Vega Squadron. Of course, INTZ, it wasn't a poor game from them. Shinny had obviously a few mistakes, maybe a little bit of nerves on his first uh, game on the stage. Could have just needed a little bit more to actually get INTZ ahead. Unfortunately, I think that's a major red flag for INTZ. Uh, Shinny did not look in form. That did not look like someone who is, you know, the best jungler in Brazil right there. It looked like a completely different animal. And if you're an INTZ fan and if you're a Brazil supporter, that's not what you need to see. You're like, I needed Shinny to have a good game. I needed him to flex on this. I thought that Shinny was going to be the stronger jungler. And Pineapple and No Man's were just the superior 2v2. No Man's had a great performance as well on that. Syndra was able to do a lot of work in that mid game. I do you wonder, you know, how how much is Vega going to be able to rely on picks like this? They have a lot of them. They have a lot of uniqueness. But how long can it work? I mean, frankly, even though there was a Karthus marksman there, it wasn't about the Karthus bot. Like that wasn't the defining factor. Certainly, it helped into the team fights. Right, he did do almost thirty thousand damage. <laughs> yes, but he's Karthus. That's true. <laughs> but that was mostly on the end. The early game fell apart for INTZ. Um, Shinny got red by Ananasik. Uh, no Man's was there. They snowballed the Syndra and the Lee Sin. They were able to execute on that cleanly. And it felt like Envy didn't get the impact that he wanted to on that rise because he was being run around or his team was being picked off. So across the board for Vegas Squadron, I don't think this win was because of the Karthus bot. There was a Karthus yeah. in the game, but there was so much more going on. Oh, definitely. Like They played their composition incredibly well. And it looked like INTZ just maybe hadn't quite read them properly, hadn't quite come uh, really at the, at the quality level we expected them to. And you expect them to step up in their next game today. I mean, maybe they did, and maybe Vega Squadron is just maybe. that high. That's the cool thing about Group B is I honestly have no idea who pops out here. Okay, so we've, see, we've actually seen the first two games from Group B now, and I think you know where I'm going with this question. Power rankings. Come on, hit me. Where where are we looking? Who goes first? Who's second? Who's third? Where are we expecting the teams to end up? I'm not ready to fully jump aboard the Detonation Focus Me hype train. I watched a lot of footage from them, and there were still like key mistakes. I think the composition and the creativity that they brought here band-aided a lot of those and covered it up because mm -hmm. they survived the lane phase so well. And frankly, Mega just like like bought front row secrets uh, seats to watch themselves lose. Um, but I'm gonna say Vega, Detonation, INTZ, and Mega. I think I'd agree with that so far. Well, our player of the game for that game was Santos. He definitely deserved it on the pike. Those death and blows were on point. I can't remember him really missing a bone skewer as well. A couple of times in the early laning phase, he didn't quite get the combo off properly, but overall, really good play. I think he can tweak up his um, lane phase, but his roaming potential and how he was executing on those team fights definitely a standout. I mean, that's what they expected him to do in this game as well. We talked about the Carthus pick just pushing out the wave to give Pike the time to roam around. When we 